All right, welcome to the PTA Global community. Rodney Korn here with PTA Global, and I am blessed to be joined by Gary Gray, the, uh, the namesake and founder of the Gray Institute. And we're gonna go over a topic today that is called triangulation. And the reason why we are uh, so adamant about having Gary as part of this is because it really was coined by Gary through the Gray Institute. And it's a very, very unique concept that has at least from what we've seen so far, really helped revolutionize how we how think we about moving and actually how, how, we how we can navigate moving. Navigate. And so, Gary, if, if you would be so kind to go through and answer a few questions for our viewers, I think that would be a, a real great start and a great insight to not only what you do, but what you've brought to the table and then how we can take this and then further it and use it in different, different avenues with different populations and different what is triangulation? Uh, triangulation is a um, obviously a three-dimensional term that uh, we have come up with over probably the last 20 years as a result of developing the nomenclature for human movement. Um, and knowing that one of the principles of human movement is that we are three-dimensional and we work and we move in three dimensions, we quickly realized that the terminology that was out there uh, wasn't necessarily wrong, it just wasn't sufficient. And uh, without that being uh, sufficient, we realized that we needed to come up with a three-dimensional term. And so triangulation is really no different than if you uh, are flying a fighter jet and your whole goal is to go to, to, to actually shoot your missile somewhere in space. You have to know three places before you can actually shoot it, and that would be called a triangulation. In fact, fighter pilots will talk about triangulating the enemy. Mm -hmm. So the first thing they'll talk about, of course, is the angle, then, they'll, of course, they'll talk about the verticality, and then they'll talk about how far that target is away, because you need to know all three p points in three-dimensional space. It's the same thing with human movement. So triangulation just came as a result of knowing we had to come up with kind of a scientific process to, as you properly said, articulate movement in order that we can properly communicate and empower people. How did you come up with the term triangulation, which is a pretty, I think it's a pretty cool term. Yeah, I think it's a term that's been out there for years, and I think we, uh, like with a lot of terms that we utilize, we hopefully borrow it appropriately uh, and apply it. Uh, and so if you triangulate on anything, if you go, if you're out in the sea, if you're out in the ocean, if you triangulate anything, you're basically saying is I can point out a spot in three-dimensional space with the proper triangulation. So I think triangulation is a term that, of course, we used in geometry and, and uh, gives me kind of quivers thinking about, I, you know, I didn't know what it meant back then. I'm not sure if I know what it means now, but it really helps if you use, uh, understand that if I'm going to move my body in three-dimensional space in order to determine if I'm, if I'm going to reach forward, well, forward's an angle. If I'm going to reach forward over my head versus to the ground, that's a verticality. And if I'm going to go to the ground four inches in front of me or ten inches in front of me, immediately we realize all those are different triangulations, and I have to have all three of those components in my triangulation to know where I'm going to ultimately reach. It really empowers us to allow us then to move and reach and do things in uh, literally a zillion different ways. How did you come to the realization, or how did you come up with the, the notion or idea that we need to actually be using this in our industry? Obviously, your background is a physical therapist, and you've been a physical therapist for a long time. But bringing it into the movie, how did you come up with the realization that, you know, we really need to be looking at this and using that? Where did, where did that kind of hit you? Well, I think I, I don't, I'm pretty sure it wasn't, um, you know, my idea that we needed it. I think it was all of our ideas. And in and, and the movement science industry, which includes therapists and, and, and personal trainers and chiropractors and orthopods and strength coaches and, and everybody who appreciates the movement of the human body and anybody who is – given the responsibility to enhance the movement of somebody's body, uh, as we are as personal trainers and hopefully as we are as, uh, as physical therapists and uh, other healthcare professionals, it's, it's, it was critical to us that we had a sensitive language that was reproducible. Um, I, I've been blessed because I'm a personal trainer, I'm an athletic trainer, I'm a strength coach, and I'm a uh, physical therapist, 
And but in all four disciplines, we would call the same movement a different thing. Mm -hmm. And of course, that for me, just personally, was confusing. Certainly, if I was going to communicate a a movement as an assessment technique or a training technique or a rehabilitation technique or a preventative technique. If I couldn't articulate exactly what I was trying to do with my audience, we quickly realized that we were losing the ability to communicate, obviously losing credibility. And basically, we might all be right, but without the ability to communicate, we were wrong. So I'm not sure we all of a sudden years ago sat back and said, hey, we're going to come up with this new three-dimensional terminology because we're three-dimensional human beings. Over a period of years, we realized that the power of our movement profession, the power of the personal training profession, is going to be dependent upon us sharing best efforts, uh, sharing opportunities that, that work with our various clients and patients. And if we're going to share, we better be speaking the same language. So it's really forced us to say we have to make this language scientific. It has to be uh, bulletproof through all disciplines. It has to, forward has to mean forward everywhere. Backward has to mean backward everywhere. So we, may, we use very clear terms. But coming up with not only do we have to have a direction, but a height and a distance, the triangulation was kind of like the aha moment of, well, I think this is going to be easier than we thought. Mm -hmm. And as you indicated, World Cert does an amazing job, I think an incredible job of realizing that we're going to be able to allow you to empower you to do more things with your clients if you at least have the language. Because once you have the language, now you, you can actually say, hmm, I'm going to do that a little bit different than that. And therefore, just with that little bit of different triangulation, I'm going to be able to help my got clients. got that aha moment about three-dimensionality and three-dimensional space and how it manipulates and how it makes such a massive impact to the human body. How did it change your application when all of a sudden you realize, hey, with three-dimensionality, there's a lot of stuff going on. How did it change personally your application, which has really been part of now the whole gift process, the whole program mm -hmm. that you have through the Green Institute, and how you really teach and, and, and teach people to look at the human body? How did it personally change your application when you kind of hit that, ah, oh, wow, there's this three-dimensionality that we're not really tapping into? Well, uh, it was huge. Uh, I mean, it, 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 it sounds kind of corny, but... Uh, you know, even in, like you say, the first day of school, we did learn that, you know, we move, uh, you know, in the sides of playing frontal plane and transverse plane, they show the person with all the planes going through their body, the naked person, and then we seem to forget about it for the next number of years. And to be able to then be able to, to, see somebody move and appreciate that part of that is in the sagittal plane, part of that is in the frontal plane, and part of that is in the transverse plane, but be able to then say, I, I can see the movement, but now I can describe the movement. Um, we we became knew all these wonderful things that people were doing with clients and wonderful movements and group exercises and assessment techniques, and but nobody could describe it. No one could call me up on the phone and say, here's what we're doing, because they were trying to use one-dimensional language for a three-dimensional movement. And so when we finally said, well, we know we work in three dimensions, and therefore if we can come up with this triangulation-type language, uh, boy, uh, for us it's empowered us tremendously to be more sensitive to what we're doing. It's allowed us to, as you know, tweak more. It's allowed us to create environments where we can day by day show the progress that our client's making because with the triangulation you can actually have subtle language that will really give a differentiation between what you did today and did, did tomorrow. So it, it basically changed, you know, just like anything else, if you finally, uh, the day you learn how to communicate, you know, what's inside your heart and what's inside your mind, your whole life changes. And communication has this huge power. So it's, a, it's helped us uh, more than I think we can even articulate. It's, hel it's helped us more than we could even communicate. That's yeah. a good way to put it. <laughs> I was going to say, it's more than I can yeah. actually put into words. Yeah. Sure. When you started actually applying the concept of triangulation, the three-dimensionality to the movement and to your patients and clients, that you started seeing a difference in the results and a difference in how they were able to either achieve a goal or achieve a response that you were trying to get. Yeah, because what we were, what we found is we let our clients guide us, uh, and we weren't guided by the limited amount of language or exercise or movement patterns we've had. So a lot of us were taught, you know, a technique, and we were taught these five or six assessment techniques or these five or six exercises, and we tried to say, well, I'm going to somehow plug my patient into this or my client into this. Right. And all of a sudden you felt we're missing something. Well, we, we were missing 99% of everything else. And so once we had this ability to think, because you almost have to know the language before you can think in 3D. 
In other words, it's like, so what are you thinking? Well, if you don't know what you're thinking, it's hard to then say, yeah. I know there's something out there I'm missing, but, but once I was thinking in three-dimensionality, um, it, it, it allowed us to read our clients better and find out what we could do for them, meet their needs as, it has, as opposed to them plugging into our system. We had now the power to plug into their system which is a huge difference, where all of a sudden we empowered them based on their needs and wants as opposed to saying, well, this is, the, you know, the eight techniques I got or the five things I can assess you with. And, you know, if you just don't fit in, if this doesn't, is not meaningful to you, then, well, then we're, then we're in trouble. But now, now that we have, you know, 50 million things to choose from and I can describe them all, and I have nomenclature from all, and I can communicate them not only to you but to other professionals, but I can communicate them effectively to my client. Uh, basically, the whole world opened up. The, 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 the training room went from this little single plane, isolated, small little place where we do just a few little assessments and a few little exercises, and basically our room turned into the world. Yeah. And so it's kind of looking around saying, wow, there's mountains over there. I see sunshine. Is that the ocean? How come I hadn't seen the ocean before? So it's, it's basically been huge. Sounds like personalized training. Strangely enough, it sounds a lot like personalized training. <laughs> Jerry, thank you for your time. Now, if people want more information, because this is only just, it's, this is like a little tadpole of the, of the amount of information that you guys deliver to the Grand Institute and the impact that you can have on a variety of different areas, you know, everything from assessment to movement. I mean, there's, there's tons of stuff. How can people get more information or where should they go to get more information about the Grand Institute and the offerings that you guys have? Well, I appreciate you asking that uh, because, you know, we're all, we're all I think, doing a, a, a good a job as we can to try to get the word out, and it's not a single source. And that's what's kind of what's, – that's what's exciting, I think, about our profession now is we're seeing, you know, everybody kind of coming to the forefront and say, you know, between now and when we die, uh, we got to get to as many people as we can with the encouraging word of – uh, movement, the encouraging word of empowerment, and just the encouraging word of encouragement. And uh, our site uh, has some of this stuff. Of course, your site has much of the stuff. Uh, and, there's, you know, there's other sites out there. So for, for kind of our slant on it, kind of our functional three-dimensional slant on it, uh, we would encourage people just to simply go to our website, Gray yeah, Institute. Yeah, I strongly suggest that you guys in the community check out the Gray Institute, www.grayinstitute, all one word, dot com. A lot of information, very, very beneficial, very helpful. Gary, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure. I always enjoy talking to you, and I look forward to some more in the future. Other things coming Thanks. up. Thanks. Yeah, hey, just, just, just keep up the amazing work. We'll try. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you very much, Gary. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye now.